All right, so this is part two of our HTML and CSS refresher. Um, in the first part, we um, overviewed and um, implemented the HTML, which is the structure of our page. And in this video, we're going to cover the CSS and the things that will help bring the page together. So at this point, we do have um, you know all those core HTML elements um, that are already coded. So you do want to make sure you've watched part one first. All right. So if you're on this part, we are ready to start implementing CSS. Just as a reminder, I do already have a CSS file started, um, which I'll show you in just a minute. So I do have it saved inside a folder named CSS. So you may want to make sure that you um, organize your files for your assignments and projects so that you um, can follow along and do similar to what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to use external style sheets. Okay, so to do that, I've got a link to my style sheet that I've made. And I'll open it up in just a second. But you can put this line in even before you've made a CSS file. And the biggest thing that you need to remember is that we do need to make sure that we link to the correct file. All right, so this right here is the link to the file. So if we look at this, I'm going from my index file to CSS, and that's the name of my file. So for me, that's correct. If you name your file or your folder differently, yours may be different. All right, so with that said, I do like to demo first. Let's make sure before we start typing a ton of CSS, I need to just go ahead and test and make sure this is working. So we'll just go ahead and um, add in like a background color and I'll just pick something pretty light, nothing too crazy. Corn silk is usually pretty reliable for demo purposes. And then I'll save it. And then when I come back here to index and test it, I can see that that color has popped up. So if that color does not pop up, then that means your link to your CSS may not be correct. So like if I accidentally added an S and I test it again, that color may not be displaying. Okay, or it shouldn't be. All right, so you, you do wanna make sure that your link is correct. And then once that link is correct and you've got everything ready, then we can start actually typing our, um, our CSS. Okay, so with that said, let's go back to the CSS. We're gonna start out with some basic things. Um, usually the body tag, everything is inside. If we go back to that HTML, everything is inside our body tag, right? That displays on our page. So we want everything to be affected by this body tag that we can possibly control like our font family. Okay, and so we've got sans serif. You could pair in a couple different fonts, like you could actually start naming, um, you know, different fonts and you can come up with whatever those names are. Basically, it's going to go in order of the font that is on your computer and then it'll go down in order. So you could explicitly say names of fonts or you can just kind of give like a overall generalization like sans serif. So the font size is going to be whatever our body copy or our paragraph size is. So a good size these days is probably between um, 14, 16 pixels on average. And so we can keep on testing. I'm actually gonna keep it in the background now this time. So we can look at it at any point. So I did need to save my HTML file. You may have noticed it did not take anything initially. So I've got that. I'm just going to minimize this a little bit and put it right over there. Next thing we're going to change is um, let's let's go ahead and change um, a couple things for our container and our item. So if we look back at our HTML, we've got our container, our item one, and our item two. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start to style those. So I'm going to start with container. And I'll type in width 1200 pixels. And then, and I don't know if you guys have seen that. It just, just changed my page. So notice it cut it off at 1200. And then we can type in things like padding. 
I should be able to do margin zero auto. So I don't know if you guys noticed that it just centered my layout. Now, if you're using brackets, a lot of the times it'll put this blue in and it's just trying to let you know what your most recent change was. So if you refresh the browser, that goes away. Okay, so that is my, um, my width. If I really wanted to be able to see that box completely, I could put in a border. And that sometimes helps you see things just a little bit better so that we have a little bit more space around things. So now if I want to put in 10 pixels, so anything over zero, we've got to put in a value like a measurement. So 10 pixels gives me this little bit of space here if I need it. All right, now there's one other thing that I, I want you guys to notice. So as I mentioned in the last demo, a lot of elements in HTML are block, meaning if we put a heading in, if we put a paragraph, they go to a new line. An image and links are considered inline. So if I actually, and let's just show you, if I took this image and duplicated it, it'll stay in line. So for me to push it to that next line, I have to put in the break tag, but everything else like div tags, section tags, footer tags, paragraphs, lists, etc., a lot of elements in HTML are block elements. So when we build layouts, that makes it really tough for us to be able to control where things go. So we're gonna use, um, obviously we've, we've set up our parent container and our items. And now we're going to use the start of what we're calling Flexbox, which is um, a pretty common way that we build layouts today. And you saw something just change. So what happens is you're going to put in um, the property display, and then you're going to say it's going to flex. And what happens is it those things sit side by side. And if you don't have a width on your item, they basically equal out. So they fit in that 1200 space. Okay, so that should be something that you should be able to do this week relatively easily. Um, and again, this, the way that the, the centering works is this right here. And I'll just make a comment. So in CSS, commenting is a little bit different. Um, and you may even put in right here. This is the parent container. All right, so if you want to make notes to yourself so you know what they do, um, that is very helpful to you. So some other things that you do want to learn how to do, and just so we can see things a little bit better, let's go ahead and style item two, or item one and then item two. So we have, um, again, background color is the easiest way. That and borders are usually the easiest way to see different things within your layout. So we'll put in, let's do light blue. And then we will go ahead and put in, and I want to make sure you guys can see this at the same time. So notice the light blue is here, but this is all the way up against the edge. So that's where padding will help. So we can put in some padding, 10 pixels. And then we'll put in some margin too. And I just want to explain the difference really quickly. We'll learn a lot more about it in another um, lesson. But it's basic, both of them are basically space. Okay, and you can kind of see these dotted lines that brackets in the browser are trying to add. Um, padding is space on the inside of the element. And of course, I need to save. There it goes, it's come back to me. All right, so padding is the space right here on the inside, and margin is the space on the outside of that area, okay? So as you go through, you're gonna be able to style things pretty easily. We'll learn a lot more about being more specific and um, helping reduce code just a little bit more in future lessons. But just for the sake of today, we're gonna be able to put in our, our different values so that we can control what each one does. So we'll say um, item two will be, let's do dark gray. I may actually want, oh, that's not too dark. And then we'll do, I'm gonna give it a different padding and a different
different margin just so you guys can see it's do 25. So you'll start to notice like it's putting this blue around just as a perfect like a preview for brackets. Once we refresh it goes down. So because I added in that margin here and the padding, you will notice it is a lot more space. Um, so obviously things won't line up if they're not equivalent. But just so you can see like, you know, this is 25, that's 10, and you can just kind of gauge what works best for you in this case. Okay, um, now you may decide to change the styles of some of your other HTML tags. So we have like headings. So I've got my heading and we can just say maybe we want to change the color. Something really dark. That's not terrible. Let's see. dark blue so now you see that change so this will allow you to change the headings for anything that is an h1 now if you had multiple headings on this page that were h1s then we would want to use a class but in this case that is um, pretty straightforward and easy um, you could group things so if we wanted both of them to be blue so h1 and h2 we could just separate them by a comma, okay? Um, and you could even do, you know, if you really wanted the paragraphs to be blue. Remember, that body copy that we displayed for the font for our body, um, that just basically relates to any type that is on the page. Um, anything that becomes a heading or a list or a paragraph, it's going to take over its own styles once you decide to style them, okay? so. With that said, I'm going to take and just keep that as H1 and the rest of them I'm going to leave. All right. We do want to also learn at this level how to style our links. It's very, very basic. So there are a few different types of styles um, for links. I'm going to just go ahead and type them out for you. I am not going to style all of them. I shouldn't have the space there. Instinctively, I type a space after my semicolon. And then we've got a active. Okay, so the way it works is links, if we look at our HTML, use the A tag. Okay, so if we style with the A tag, we can basically style all four states. So a link, whenever you put it in a page, has a link state which is the original state, a visited state, which is basically after the page has been visited, a hover state, meaning when we actually hover the link with our cursor, and then an active state is the page that you're on. A lot of the times you may not style all of those, so I'm actually only gonna style those two, and I'm actually, because they're HTML tags, I'm gonna move them up here, okay? Now I've gotta finish these CSS rules or my other CSS may be affected. So we'll put that in. And we're just gonna go ahead and start out with the styles that we want for our links. So we're gonna say color, and let's go ahead and change this to black. And let's go ahead and say font weight. Now I've been coding a little bit longer, so um, I have some of these tucked away in my head, and then the program, of course, sometimes hints to us. But know that you can reference sites like uh, W3Schools or CSSReference.io to reference all of the different properties and values. Don't feel like you have to come up with them um, out of your head. So we've also got text decoration, none. And that's gonna take away our underline. Okay, so let's take a look. So we've got our links now, okay, and we can hover them. So the last thing we need to do now is just go ahead and say color, and I'm purposely gonna change it. Let's do white. And let's do border. So 
So whenever I hover, it's going to turn white and it's going to put an underline and overline, basically. I could have used text decoration, but sometimes I find border easier with links. All right, so that is that. Um, we will learn a ton more about Flexbox. So really the biggest thing that you need to know for this week that's different that you may not have learned in previous classes is that display flex is really the thing that will put things side by side. If I took that out or commented it right now, I'll show you what we end up with just as a reminder. You know, this is kind of what we would end up having. So until we um, put that display flex in, we don't have the ability to get things side by side unless we use other methods that were popular before. So, um, which we now use Flexbox and CSS Grid a lot more these days. So this is going to be helpful to you guys and it should be a lot easier to build layouts. So this week you're gonna to wanna to be able to build your HTML and your CSS so that these things get into place and just make sure you follow the instructions to bring in the core HTML and CSS. Um, and as long as you follow these videos, that should help you get through so that you can complete this assignment and just reach out if you have questions or if you get stuck.